Welcome to a journey through time and culture where we explore one of anthropology's most foundational yet controversial theories, classical evolutionism. Do you know the most salient points about this theory in anthropology? If you need to write an answer on this topic, who would you list as its important contributors? I am Karthik and today in this short video as a part of my series on theories of anthropology, we'll unravel the theory of classical evolutionism, look at its postulates and critically analyze its impact and legacy in the world of anthropology. Hello everyone and welcome to this exploration into fundamental concept that has shaped our understanding of human societies, classical evolutionism. This theory, pivotal in the history of anthropology, offers a unique lens through which we can view and understand the development of human cultures. Now, what exactly is classical evolutionism? In a nutshell, it's a theory in anthropology that suggests all societies progress through similar stages of development. This theory, born in the minds of the 19th century scholars, painted a picture of human societies marching in unison from simplicity to complexity and from savagery to civilization. It fundamentally viewed human societies as evolving from simpler forms to more complex ones in a linear trajectory. This concept profoundly influenced the way anthropologists studied the cultures and societies across the world, laying the groundwork for modern anthropological thought. The foundation of classical evolutionism rests on several key postulates. The most significant of these is the concept of unilineal cultural evolution. This idea proposed that all societies, irrespective of their geographical location or background, follow the same path or sequence of development. And how is this possible? Well, they believe in existence of psychic unity of mankind. It viewed human development as a linear process, with all societies inevitably moving towards a common endpoint of civilization, akin to that of Western Europe and America at the time. Another critical aspect of this theory was the notion of social Darwinism. Drawing inspiration from Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, social Darwinism applied these ideas to culture and societies. It suggested that some societies were more fit or advanced than others, often placing the Western societies at the apex of this evolutionary ladder. This concept greatly influenced not only anthropology, but also the political and social ideologies of the time. This theory wouldn't be complete without acknowledging its key proponents. Edward Bernard Tyler, a major figure in anthropology, introduced the broad definition of culture. He viewed culture as a complex ensemble that encompasses knowledge, belief, art, moral law and custom, and any other capability acquired by individuals as members of a society. Lewis Henry Morgan, another influential figure, contributed significantly with his theories on social structure and the stages of cultural development. His work laid the foundation for understanding the evolution of family, property and garment systems in human societies. And of course, Sir James George Fraser, who proposed that the human belief systems evolve from magic through religion to science. He argued that these stages reflect different ways societies attempt to understand and control their world. Classical evolutionism laid the groundwork for modern anthropological thought, 
influencing the way anthropologists studied the cultures and societies. It provided one of the first systematic methods for understanding and categorizing the development of human societies, the comparative method. While influential, classical evolutionism has been critiqued for its oversimplified view of human development and obviously its Eurocentric bias. Critics argue that it fails to appreciate the unique complexities and diversities of different cultures. Further, most of the contributors to this school of thought have been branded as armchair anthropologists who have based their grand theories on secondary sources of data without any fieldwork. Despite these critiques, the impact of classical evolutionism on the field of anthropology cannot be understated. It paved the way for future theories and methods, opening doors to a more nuanced understanding of human cultures and their development.